This is uh, Chicho. We're September 22nd, 2019. And uh, today's discussion is basically an open discussion on education beyond the propaganda, how to work the system. And uh, basically, we've done how many of these we've done? I'm not sure how many of these we've done. We've done at least a couple of uh, discussions on education. And uh, since it's the beginning of the 2019-2020 school year, I thought uh, we just open up the platform and see what people have in mind. There's a lot of stuff going on uh, regarding education. There's different types of systems popping up. There's different types of schools popping up. There's a serious collapse of the centralized education system. So there's sort of disruptive innovation popping up. Maybe online, maybe in local communities, maybe funded by large institutions, right? And uh, some with good intentions, some with not. So I thought we'd talk about some of that stuff. Um, it's pretty important. Uh, it will, our current education system, X, how are you doing? Our current education system is basically going to decide the future of. You know, don't want to make it sound too dramatic, but uh, it's going to decide everything, right? Just like politics governs everything. Everything is politics, right? Um, has a political slant to it. The precursor to that political slant is uh, basically education, how we decide to share information. Okay. Aside from that, uh, welcome to the live stream. These are turning out to be sort of like podcast style. I'm liking it. Uh, someone mentioned we should do more, you know, or do podcasts. So maybe uh, we're leaning in that direction. We'll see where it all goes, right? Uh, Gobble. Penguin. <laughs> I don't know. I can't even pronounce your first part. Uh, Penguin, how are you doing? Good morning. Chicho means uncle in my part of the world. Greece? Greece, I think. Penguin? I think someone told me Chicho met uncle somewhere. I think it was Greece um, or Portugal. So that would mean in Brazil as well. Eduardo, hello, hello, how are you doing? A truce. Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, it means uncle. That's cool. <laughs> I went to Bulgaria. I went to Budapest. Budapest was absolutely amazing. A truce, how are you doing? How's it going, brother? Hope all is well. Doing well, brother. Doing well. Uh, third live stream uh, in a row in three days. So uh, it's fun. We started off with uh, mathematics two days ago. So we did a couple hour math drop in tutoring session, I guess. And uh, it was good. We talked about quadratics and sort of I gave my intro, general intro that I give for quadratics to uh, my students that are at that stage right so I sort of give a give an overview of how I present quadratic functions and that was pretty important uh, that was two days ago yesterday we did the uh, live stream lively live stream on politics current events uh, news and uh, today education and they're all related of course right maybe mathematics politics education it's all uh, it's are very much interlinked. Uh, you can't really separate one from the other. Um, some people think they're uh, they're different, but great lasagna. Good afternoon, Chicha. How's it going? How's it going? Great lasagna. Two days in a row. Three days in a row. I think you've been here, maybe. What liqueur are we sipping on today? No liqueur. Um, I switch up. I made. Uh, by the way, I shot a liqueur video yesterday. I still have to edit the previous liqueur video we did. That's like an hour and a half. We were making pineapple and blackberry liqueur, right? I uploaded the live stream, but I didn't. When I got into editing that, I had my hard drive crash. So now I've restored some stuff back, you know, backed up some stuff, did a little transition, bought some hard hardware, just external hard drive, just to do double backups of the things. So the odds are I'm going to, uh, two days in a row, nice, great lasagna. Uh, so the odds are I'm going to try to edit the longer liqueur video first 
and then yesterday I shot a liqueur uh, making uh, after the live stream politics live stream I needed a you know not needed but a little bit of liqueur would have been it was nice so I decided to make the carnelian cherry liqueur video yesterday so we'll probably load that up and uh, I don't know probably in a week I'll have it up okay but today this is uh, blackberry jam that I made the pulp the milled stuff I put in a two liter jar and I poured soda on top of it okay and I I've had that in the fridge for the last three weeks I guess so I'm drinking my own uh, blackberry soda drink and it's really good it's really good I also have tea like I got cold and hot here together and I got a little bit of You were here yesterday. <laughs> I remember you. Uh, you've been here a fair bit, actually, uh, brother. Finn. I, I keep on forgetting how to pronounce your name. Finn. F-N. Someone said lasagna. No, I'm hungry. Me too, I think. I'm a little hungry right now. I, had, I made myself a little bit of pancakes this morning. Right? Add that. If you're in school, if you're a student, if you're out of school, and living by yourself one of the best things you can do if you're a student is to learn how to cook okay that should be part of every education system every curriculum not every curriculum but every education um, department should have some kind of food related centric course associated with it I'm a friend, not food. I'm a friend, not food. Great lasagna says. Just a bite. Come on. Oh no. Hey everyone, Mask of Raven, how are you doing? Yeah. If you are in school or a student, get out of that uh, place fast. Yeah. If you are in school or a student, do what you need to do and get out get out. Pull out. Right? Uh begin to experiment uh, live your life figure out who you are what your passions are uh, what your passions aren't where you don't want to be eliminate one of the best things i can uh, you know recommendations i can give forget about what you love figure out what you really don't want to be around right and start eliminating some of the crap that's around you right at the time later on you might re evaluate your understanding of that system of that thing of that person right of that mindset and always never burn the bridge right sever ties completely always check back to some of the things you knew before right just to see where they have gone because you did acquire some bit of information and knowledge even if it was bad right but eliminate the things you don't want to be around and slowly when the void starts forming you fill it with things that you might want to be around more right if you're in school or if you're a student of some kind of institution do what you need to do as fast as possible and get out in general there are some institutions that are worth spending some time in either as an apprentice or formal cooking is great i learned when i was seven yeah bacon slaying nice <laughs> yeah cooking is fantastic the easiest thing to learn how to cook on is eggs if you can make yourself eggs you can make some of the most gourmet dishes possible right practice by making yourself eggs salam three easy 11 but three three even three is not even three is odd it's better to hang here you learn more it's better to hang here. i don't know 
if you're the, if you're studying the right courses, you probably learn more in in a lecture, possibly, possibly, right? Hardcore math lecture in an hour, two hours, wow, you could have solved the uh, many many problems, right? Hi, Chicho. Hi, Chat. Genius Pro. How are you doing? Chicho always has the best advice for young people. Hopefully, it doesn't lead you down the wrong road, right? Starsky I just share by the way great lasagna I just share some of the things that uh, have worked for me and have not worked for me right and they go hand in hand there's no way anyone in this world has never made a bad decision or dozens or hundreds or thousands of wrong choices in their lives right just imagine how old you are and how many wrong choices you make in a day right just live your day seriously in for a week here's a little mathematics for a week I've never done this by the way I just do estimations in my own mind sometimes a few orders of magnitude off sometimes a few orders of magnitude the other way right but here's an experiment if you ever want to do one and if you do it share share with us right the data on a calendar figure out how many mistakes you make in a week bad decisions bad decisions stupid decisions you can categorize them right bad decision stupid decision what a wrong choice <laughs> like whatever you want categorize it at. do it for a week take that number multiply it by 52 that's a year that's how many bad decisions you made in that year right and then multiply that by year how old you are right well let's let's assume you can count uh you should be responsible for your decisions since you're 10 years old 12 years old some decisions maybe maybe in adults maybe at voting age right so if you're 20 for two years that's how many wrong decisions you've made since you've been an adult adult morris how are you doing starsky hello hello eggs are super healthy and easy to make very easy to make and very versatile you can make many things with eggs after eggs after you figured out how you like your eggs and there should be at least two ways that you like your eggs one of them is always almost always dominant right but try making eggs like three or four different ways the hardest one is uh, in boiling water what do you call the poached eggs right that's the hardest one for me okay once you master how to cook eggs, the next step is to make pancakes. <laughs> okay. Because pancakes requires you to mix some stuff together. But it's the simplest things in the world, right? A little bit of flour, a little bit of yogurt and water. We made pancakes. That's the way I make them anyway. Yogurt and water and an egg, right? Mix it up and cook it. Pancakes is the next step from eggs. By the way, these are delicious things to do okay these streams are always so well timed nice 11 o'clock in the morning or one o'clock in the afternoon is a good time 11 o'clock in the morning is a good time double the negative time for another cooking video chicho uh it will be in the fall i will in the fall there is if everything works out well there's going to be a anyway the, the, basically for the next month i sort of know what i'm going to do in the next month after a month uh we're probably going to try to roll in the hardcore asmr math and more cooking videos fall cooking videos right we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna cook up some lamb i think lamb is delicious but if we solve all problems what else is there to solve after we are done yeah we'll never solve all all problems the, it's the we still haven't figured out how a mind really works max mask of raven thank you for the sub thank you for the sub we'll never solve all of our problems and that's the beauty of life right some people always want more right that's a great thing but you gotta time your wanting you should be satisfied much of your life with what you have right but you should always be left wanting a little bit there was a saying that uh, my grandfather used to have 
where and this is the same that I've heard other people say it and wise words handed down through generations where they say never leave the table when you're eating full up to here always leave room for more that way you're always left wanting a little bit more and that makes food that much better i thought i should probably contribute after leeching for years now masco raven thank you and it's not leeching seriously masco i don't consider it leeching right uh, if people can afford to support this work fantastic please support this work it'll help me to roll things out a lot faster and dedicate more of my time to this work right but i am doing this for the love of it and for me when i do something for the love of it it doesn't really matter for me if i do it really fast or if i do it really slow okay because i can honest honestly tell you even if i go really fast i have enough content to create for at least another 10 15 years like if i live that long right if i go really slow i'm still gonna keep on going so it doesn't really make a difference i like doing this thank you for the support okay why would you want to solve all your problems here's a historical question do you think that japan was better off before the boshin boshin war or did they need a modern government uh th this is more politics and night uh um nightly so we're not really dealing with politics in regards to war and geopolitical stuff even though education is part of that um so historically first of all i don't know what the boshin war refers to uh boshin war uh did they need modern government i i'm assuming that's uh, when they finally the west met japan uh, i don't know i would have to look that up but uh, let's talk about that during a politics stream okay the japanese civil war during the samurai things i would have to look that up i don't know i don't know okay but for sure politics stream would be great and if you want to inform me give me an introduction to this because this is about education so history is part of education okay the shodan is yeah i play some uh, board games regarding that actually uh imperial government yeah i've played some board games uh regard uh with that period in mind right but educate us go to our discord page under history if there is an article or a video that you think does a good job of giving us a general overview of what the boshin war was about and the players involved right uh post it there under history and uh, hopefully during the next politics uh, stream we can talk about it um, I'm here to be educated as well, man. Awesome. Thank you, man. Hey, Chicho, seeing that you live in Vancouver, do you know anything about the Church of San Santo Demo? Is that the one where they do um, peyote ceremonies? Or peyote or ayahuasca ceremonies? I'm bad with names, so I never associate a name with anything. I just know offense and faces and stuff like this. Uh, I'm assuming that's the one. Uh, I like what Nikola Tesla said. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Uh, Sitkis Ermanen, uh, Tesla, if, if you're in school, the odds are you really haven't been told anything about Nikola Tesla, okay? Which is a shame because as far as I'm concerned, there should be at least one class, full legit class, in either grade 10, 11, or 12 in high school, in my part of the world, Canada, specifically dedicated to Nikola Tesla, okay? Most people coming out of high school have never heard of Nikola Tesla, and that says something about our current centralized education system. They know Edison, they don't know Tesla crazy crazy right look into nikola tesla read about him okay and by the way uh, uh funny you brought this up a couple of days ago i was actually looking into nikola tesla's 369 
uh, theory. I didn't get too far down it. I've looked to Nikola Tesla a long time ago. I've known about his work, read his stuff, watched documentaries and stuff like this. Um, highly recommend and 100% uh, the frequency and the magnitude vibrations of energy are extremely important okay the boshin war was a japanese civil war between the tokowana shogun and the imperial government shogun total war what a game shogun total war what a game there's so many amazing games uh associated with that period uh i can do that nice total war and europa uh universalis great games I don't know that one Europa University Universalis it was during the industrial era cool paradox just makes fantastic games ayahuasca yeah so that's the church of da, 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 da. where was it church of church of Santo de Amo okay creative assembly too nice. um, and just regarding the ayahuasca thing it, it is part of education as well uh, to a certain degree not necessarily a high school education but uh, tesla invented the alternating current edison did everything he, his way to show allow this Boop. okay i'm going to read that before i go further nikola tesla invented the alternating current edison did everything in his way to show everyone how bad the alternate current was including tying up elephants gigantic elephants and then electrocute electrocuting them to show that Nikola Tesla's uh, alternating current was so dangerous. Edison electrocuted live elephants in the streets to get his point across. Then Edison stabbed him in the back and laughed his way to the bank with the uh, patents. And uh, JP Morgan, I believe it was, JP Morgan Chase, uh, or was it Goldman Sachs? I forget which bank it was. Unbelievable. If you're in school, high school, okay, if you're in history class, if you're in the humanities, if you're in business, if you're taking economics, if you're taking physics, mathematics, or chemistry, really, if you're any of, in any of these courses, find a book on Nikola Tesla, preferably the best book possible, okay? read some reviews and read it or watch a few documentaries on nikola tesla okay you owe it to yourself to your education to educate yourself okay because you can't expect our central education system to educate you they're there to indoctrinate you so if you don't want to be a serf okay if you want to be a free human being which is what your ultimate goal is to become educated you owe it to yourself to educate yourself on nikola tesla okay. psychedelics make you conscious of your unconscious mind some people do not require the psychedelics to educate them on their unconscious mind some people are aware already uh, but it is a catalyst <laughs> people need to look it up people need to look it up nikola tesla one of the greatest minds ever as far as i'm concerned okay i, I studied mathematics physics chemistry and stuff like this there are some great minds right they're you know four that i could think of of the great minds in human history that we know of the history we know of no matter who you pick to be in that three four five anybody that knows anything would include nikola tesla in there okay da vinci would be another one okay but nikola tesla for many would be the number one including me Hi, Chicho. Do you think there is a way to still determine academic, uh, determine academic people from non-academic people without the needs for tests? 
essentially our systems at the moment teach you the test not the understanding so i wonder if there's a way to rid of them okay so let me read that again and by the way i think <laughs> da vinci for sure da vinci for sure all right do you think there's a way to still determine academic people from non-academic without the needs for tests is there a way to determine in what way determine uh determine uh, so take my question i'm not sure what determine determine academic people from non-academic without the needs for tests determine what uh, like i personally don't think well let me know what you mean by determine and then we'll address this i might have worded that poorly basically how do you get rid of our exam based system okay have to pop an apple these are apples that i picked that we made applesauce with right apples keep a long time right so i have three bags of apples sitting outside just wrapped up that I'm going through and we've got a drawer full of apples still raw apples and we made a whole bunch of applesauce right mm -hmm. to answer Tink's question basically how do we get rid of our exam based system our exam based system is there because of the centralization of power right so we have central education system and within that central education system we have corporations that are supporting it right like Microsoft back in the 80s was you know cheered for uh, donating millions of dollars to universities um, as donations right but they didn't really specify that Oh, Microsoft was donating a lot of software to universities so they could use it in their classes right and then they would write off that you know the value the full value of that software against their taxes so they wouldn't pay any taxes right and the other side of that brilliant move right was that the kids in university were now being educated through Microsoft software so when they came out of school that's the software they knew how to use so corporations had a good supply of cattle right really or students that were trained in the software to hire so they could keep the machine going right so I'm sort of laying down the foundation of what I'm about to say. Basically, how do we get rid of our exam based system? Here's how we do it. Once we appreciate what our centralized education system is about, right? It's about training people to work for centralized power. Okay. The way we get rid of that is we decentralize power. Now, as an individual, what you can do if you're in school or if you're not in school is to have a presence online okay really no matter who you are within reason right there are people who can function without having a presence online having a footprint where they can show the rest of not necessarily the rest of humanity but those people that they want to interact with because you can make your information private right you have to have a platform a place where you can showcase what you're capable of right our current education system has been laid out in a way where you go through it you write exams and when you graduate they give you a little piece of paper and this piece of paper is the commodity the what you've spent a lot of time money energy on sacrifice so much to get so it's your currency to go get a job somewhere that values this thing right now just imagine with technology right now if you're able to get a platform together and share or put your information on a platform and if you find a place that or some kind of job or people that are doing something that you want to work with them 
and you can approach them and say, hey, listen, what are you guys working on? Get a little bit more information. And no matter where you're getting a job, you should be doing research into that corporation to figure out if you really want to participate in that system, right? So let's assume you've done all your back end work, right? And you find people that are doing something that you're very interested in, right? Now, if they're smart and if they're not a huge multi, I'm apologies for not reading the comments. I just want to follow through with this, finish this up, right? If they're not a multinational corporation where there's tremendous amount of bureaucracy in there for you to go through, because the only way the bureaucracy can function is with this piece of paper that you've acquired to get you past one hurdle, right? Boop. And then here's another piece of paper. Boop. You do this, right? For multinational corporations. If you're not interested in going that direction, and if you find a group of people or an individual, or you have your own idea of what you want to do, right? That doesn't require you to pass bureaucratic barriers, right? Then you can approach these people, this person, or sit down and talk about what you want to do with your family, or think it through in your own mind, right? You can approach these people and say, hey, listen, I'm interested in what you're doing. I would like to participate in creating helping you out to create this thing that you're working on. If they have half a brain, if they're a small organization where they don't have all this bureaucratic system in place, they would go, well, we're not really looking for anyone right now if they're not looking for anyone. If they are, fantastic. But if they're not, if they're smart about it, they'll go, well, we're not really looking for anyone, but who are you? What have you done? Now, if someone comes out to me, if I someone's wanting to do this with me later on, when I, I actually I've had other corporations that I've done this with, right, where people have approached me and say, "Hey, want to participate?" I would say, "Who are you?" Right. But later on, just in what we're doing right now, let's assume we get larger with the mathematics and stuff like this, and someone comes up to me and says, "Hey, Chicho, I want to participate. I want to help you out," right? And I say, "Okay, I'm not. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not." I don't have the energy to manage in one right now, but what are you capable of, right? And if they bring out a piece of paper and say, hey, look, well, I wanna help you out. I got my business degree from MIT, right? Just a piece of paper. I'll go, okay. But if I have someone that says, oh, here's my website. Check out what I've done, right? And here's three things that I've done and I'm really proud of, right? Please check those out and let me know if you're interested in having my energy in there, my participation in there. That piece of paper that person brought from MIT, I'll go, okay, let's check out this guy's ba -ba -ba -ba. What has he done? Right? The way we eliminate the centralization of education, the centralization of currency in large part, right, to get rid of exams based system is to make sure people are educated enough okay mm -hmm. that they have the tools at their disposal to make sure that if they're interested in creating something working somewhere that they have a presence online and understand where we're headed in this technology based economic political system it is extremely important this exam-based system, unfortunately, you should at least get your high school degree. You need to get it, right? And that piece of paper is extremely important because that barrier hasn't been broken yet, not even close. The university degree barrier is being broken, right? Really, right? There are certain things that you need that university degree, that piece of paper to work in, depending on what system you're going into, right? But things are shifting. Look into what you're interested in and see if you really need to personally go through an exam based system to get into whatever it is you want to get into. Okay. Uh, your high school degree, you need to get. You're, you're an idiot, foolish. You're, 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 <laughs> you're setting yourself, you're putting yourself in a position where the odds of you being happy in your life is going to be reduced dramatically if you do not get your high school education, your high school diploma, 
You need to get your high school diploma. If you hate the system, this exam-based system, then go through it as fast as you can. Don't procrastinate. Just get it done, right? If you're not able to get it done as fast as you like, right? Then fill up some of your other time with passions that you have that you can breathe a little bit so you're not stuck in that hole, right? But don't fool yourself. You need to get that certificate. Okay. Donating millions without expecting anything in return. Yeah, Microsoft, right? Are you familiar with Immanuel Kant? Ah, oh, Immanuel Kant, yeah. The, the name, I know the name. I can't remember what it's associated to. By the way, I really like your work you put on uh, YouTube and your streams. Ah, oh, G G Bod 153. Thank you for the love, uh, G Bod. As for Immanuel Kant, uh, I know the name. I just need a little refresher who that is. It seems as if the idea of IQ is cancerous to society and holds people back from greatness. 100% Captain Obvious, right? As Captain Obvious, great namesake. It should be obvious to everyone. These IQ tests are garbage, right? Like I've been tutoring, teaching students for like 20 years. Before that, too, part time, like 25 years, I've, I've done this, right? I've never met a genius and I've never met a retard, right? Really? They're, the level of intelligence among kids that I've taught, everybody's capable of greatness and complete idiocy. All of them. Every single one one i have never met a genius <laughs> okay keep that in mind and i've taught people who are getting a hundred percent and i've taught people who are getting 15 percent right when i start working with them never met a genius never met an idiot okay i met stupid people that do stupid things but everybody does stupid things i do stupid things every now and then right dante what's up what's up blog github twitter account that's your cv yeah youtube channel uh instagram it de really depends on what you're doing are you an artist you better have an instagram page right youtube page wouldn't be bad show how you draw right you should have some kind of blog it's all free you can my 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 website is on blogspot it's free it doesn't cost me anything right i have other costs but my blog is you know they're, i'm showcasing my work for the last 15 years right you need to showcase what you're capable of okay in this current political economic system in our lives right now you gotta prove yourself not by getting a piece of paper through university or whatever it is you need your high school right and university some some places you do need it for me to do what i wanted to do in geophysics i needed that piece of paper right i'm very happy that i got it it took me eight years or something to pay back my student loans right but i needed it Eternal and my flesh is immortal. Flesh could be warm food too. It's not the idea of Q IQ that is holding back greatness. It's the repetitive learning of mainly nonsense in school. Yeah, I think IQ does measure something legitimately, but focusing on it too much really hurts some people. A mask of Raven, IQ. Like for example, they're they're amazing, like really musicians out there that i've taught mathematics to that i they barely pass right but in terms of music they were wow right like holy cow does iq measure that i don't know there there might be tests if we're talking about tests because that's what an iq is specifically associated with certain topics 
then I don't think they're IQ. That's just your... A lot of people associate IQ with knowledge, all-around knowledge of everything. It, the, the IQ tests sort of have a social implication to them, have an have a indoctrination uh, implica- you know, part to them. Everybody is great in their own field, more great than some of the other people. I have an issue with IQ tests. I've come across some, some people that, oh, I got this in my IQ, the parents are super happy, IQ, IQ was this. And I work with them, I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Most IQ tests that people take are pure bullshit. There's only one legit IQ test. If you really need to take one, do the MESA one. Is it? I don't know. I've never done. It doesn't matter. Intelligent blueberry, how are you doing? But having a low or high IQ uh, on a test don't determine how smart you really are in most cases. Yeah, I agree. There are exceptions. There, there are people that have uh, birth defects and people who've been in trauma, had trauma, uh, whatever it might be, that they may have certain links severed, right? That's biology. Yes, IQ measures a narrow set of aptitudes that most uh, realize. I like your sweater. Thanks. It's fall. I haven't worn this all summer. So it's fall is in. So I think in the UK, I think Casey, he's not here right now. They, they called it a jumper. I guess in the UK, they call it a jumper. Right? It's nice. I got two of these, actually. <laughs> ah, Dante, thank you for taking care of business. Chicho, I'm having some difficult time adapting to the Canadian college system. As a student who comes from European system, can you suggest me any advice? Um, What's the problem, Blueberry? Which part of it are you having a problem with? There's a lot of problems there. (laughs) Which part are you having a problem with? And how does it it, uh, vary with the European system? What are the main differences you see? Yeah, what's the main differences you see? Mask of Rio, you're... We're trying to get the same info out of people. Yeah, like the Canadian system. What are the. Let's put this guy here. Because I put ice in it, this thing's like sweating a little bit. So. Put a towel on. This blackberry thing is really nice. So I said a rough info on the Bush and Warren, the history part of the school. Awesome. Thank you very much, brother. We'll check it out. I'll check it out. Okay. And I hope others do as well. That part of uh, Japan is, has incredible history. One of the reasons I really like... By the way, Nagini, have you watched uh, Samurai Champloo? What country did you study in before going to Canada? Most European systems are different uh, to each other, depending on what part of Europe you come from. Masquerade. I don't know what a GPA is. I, that's a great point average. I don't understand the concept of writing an essay and coming from European system. It's difficult to uh, keep up with writing a factual assignment as well as needing to be grammar correctly. Really? The essay, you guys don't write uh, very many essays in Europe? Amelia Kant was an influential Enlightenment philosopher. I would highly encourage you to examine his work. Yeah, that's, but what was his main, um, Jibot, what was his main thesis to a certain degree? A lot of the philosophers, there was a main thesis associated with them, right? Um, I figured out he was, you know, a thinker of our time, but can't remember what the main thesis with the mounting of Kant was. On Samurai Shapiro I watched recently, it was freaking excellent. That was Edo period, though. I thought I thought, um, yeah, that was the Edo period. So because I know there was uh, one part where they had the um did they have anything coming up showcasing some of the I I can't remember now. But they had one one where the Dutch sailors were there. That was fantastic. Samar Shapu, like you said, freaking excellent, right? 
I come from that system where the requirements needed more accurate than perfective. Hmm. I love how I originally found you making a comic uh, book table and now I'm getting some great advice. Awesome, Captain Obvious. <laughs> The, how I store my comic books that much. I still have that set up. It's being set up like that. But, uh, as far as Blueberry, so the Canadian system is this. Um, in, in university, right? The, I agree with you. The writing essays part is, is very harsh. It's, it could be labor intensive, but it should be harder, right? One of the things I can honestly tell you, when I came out of university, I had no idea how to write anything. My first work I went to when it came to doing geophysics, uh, you know, initially for the first whatever period I was learning and stuff like this, when I got to managing my own projects, I had to put reports together, right? And it was just starting out. It was two of us that started the geophysics program for its multinational corporation in Canada, right? And it's taken off. And, we were the first two people. He, my boss, got in there and started a geophysics program, and he hired me because I'd work with him on a co-op term. He, he wanted me because I knew what I was capable of, right? But my first project that I took on to write my essay and collect the data, all that stuff, right? That we're gonna submit to <laughs> to the client, right? So I gave it to my boss because he had to approve it, right? I gave it to him, and I was all proud. I wrote my first report and analyzed blah blah blah. <laughs> I gave it to him. <laughs> I was working away on my desk on the next project. You know, four hours later, I was in a cubicle. The guy, I feel someone come up behind me and bam, my report on my desk. He goes, Chicho, what the hell is this? I was like, what? He goes, what is this crap? <laughs> it was, we were really close, right? I was like, what do you mean? And I took a look at it. And I've never, ever gotten anything back through all my years of high school and university education that had so much red marks in it and things crossed out. N never. Right? And I was like, damn. My ego went boom, crashing down. I spent the next day cleaning it up, gave it to him, came back again, right? One of the reasons that the essay part is being pushed a lot right now, and I agree with it personally, is because it is extremely important for you to be able to communicate properly with your audience, okay? So learn how that works. You need to be able to write extremely well and depending on what discipline you're in, if you're in the sciences, you need to be concise. If you're in, uh, what do you call it, uh, writing, descriptive writing stuff, you need to be descriptive, I guess. If you, need be, if you need to be historical, you need to be referencing everything properly and quotation. Like there's formats to it, right? I would say learn it, okay? Um, what was the other stuff? I don't know what a GPA, okay, that's a great point. I don't understand the concept of writing an essay and coming from European system, it's difficult keeping up with writing a factual assignment as well as it needing to be grammatically correct. Uh, Blueberry, you got no choice, brother. You gotta learn, you gotta do it, okay? You probably need to take courses outside of school or your classes to learn how to navigate the system, how to be concise in what you're saying, okay? Because what's going to happen right now with technology, with all the stuff coming in, the gra grammatically stuff, I was horrendous at it. I have a folder on my browser when I write or when I was doing a lot of writing where it had different websites where I would check things, right? Like I still have to look up the difference between then and then many times. Okay, uh, what were the other major ones? Uh, there's a few other ones, English English phrases that you can say it this way means something else, you can say it that way means something else. So grammar is, is very difficult, but just use the internet to get 
to teach yourself how to write, right? By the way, I'm not a. I, English is an extremely different, a difficult language to learn, to learn uh, well in communicating. Okay, extremely difficult for anyone that's coming, trying to do uh, communicating in English, if their background is a different language, because English is has very crazy nuances associated with them like i still look up what the difference is between a colon and a semicolon and every time i look it up i go oh okay i get it one is for listing items and the other one is a sentence that says the same thing as the previous sentence but i still don't remember which one it is colon or semicolon which one's which so i have to look it up every time okay just letting you know you bit the bullet. You came to Canada to study? Bunker down, brother. You got some work to do. <laughs> That's the way I treat my most of my students. No mercy. I'm sorry. Oh, you're complaining about try, having to do a lot of work to learn? Sorry, man. Gotta get it done. I love how I originally... Oh, yeah, that one. Captain Obvious. In Sweden, there was this group that offered a service to people doing their test to get in to university etc they help people cheat that was their service they made millions before they got caught their cell phones was encrypted so the swedish police could not un unlock it yeah there's still lots of services like that here i'll you know if you go online we'll write your essay for you really you're hiring their service first of all that's why a piece of paper from MIT doesn't mean crap to me compared to someone who has a presence online, right? I wonder how many they've helped to get into the different schools and what uh, those people uh, work with now. Those people probably work for the EU. <laughs> There's no mentor or anything that you can talk to. Yeah. You should talk to someone and by the way blueberry um, one of the things you can do most universities most universities have uh, sort of help centers right and there's a lot of students that are doing tutoring as well so you can try to reach out within the community to um, to improve your skills and by the way, Blueberry, one of the other things you can do is create an anonymous website. And if you need help with your grammar and your essay writing, write your essay on that website and go to different forums. There's, I haven't looked recently, I haven't looked in the past, where people will help you out. There's forums where they say, you know, submit your essay or post your essay here, we'll correct the grammar or we'll give you advice or we'll edit it for you so do that and if you can't find those then go to forums that are um, that are set up for a certain topic that you might be writing an essay for so for example if you're in history class and you're writing an essay on canadian history or the history of the Jap japanese civil war or something like this write your essay for your class and then go to Japanese forums, right? Historical forums and stuff like this. Post, submit your article and see what type of feedback you get. Like one of the ways I learned how to write, it wasn't a university and the my work as a geophysicist just taught me how to do geophysics scientific reports for clients. So this is one very narrow, right? Very narrow. The way I learned how to write was I started blogging. Some of the initial articles I put out, man, I used to get out. Oh, seriously, I would use then and then incorrectly. And then people would write me, you know, good people, nice people. Some people would say, what an idiot. He doesn't even use grammar correctly. They wouldn't even point it out. So I was like, oh, and I would read it and try to find mistakes. But I wouldn't take it down. You've got to have a thick skin, right? And then I would have some people say, hey, Chicho, really love the information you're sharing. Uh, but to get your point across further, uh, you should correct some of the grammars, such as then and then. And I would look it up and 
I would edit it, I would thank them very much, right? So you gotta have a thick skin, have, uh, be willing to take criticism. Okay. He goes into different areas of his thinking, but he's well known for his moral philosophy. The premise behind, uh, this is Immanuel Kant, uh, behind his philosophy is that without human freedom, moral appraisal and moral responsibility would be impossible. So let's read that again. So Immanuel Kant's uh, premise behind his philosophy is that without human freedom, moral appraisal and moral responsibility would be impossible. Without human freedom, moral appraisal and moral responsibility would be impossible. Therefore, if a person couldn't act otherwise, then there's no moral worth. Yeah. Immanuel Kant was the first person that uh, introduced this. Yeah, that's cool. I've heard this before. I wasn't. I didn't know it was from him. But basically, um, this is one of the things that Wilhelm Reich mentions regarding. He connects it up with, and other people have done as well, with the bureaucratic system. Right, when a bureaucracy kicks in, and bureaucracy is the uh, is fascism really, right? Complete totalitarianism. Once a system controls a society, once a bureaucratic system controls a society, then there is no moral appraisal or moral responsibility because human beings are not free. They're just doing the will of the bureaucracy. The system is set up this way, so I know I hold no moral accountability, right? Um, and human freedom, for sure. You're not free if you're not, if you're not responsible for your own actions, for your morals, right? Moral appraisal. I gotta look up with moral appraisal. Moral responsibility for sure would be possible. Therefore, if a person couldn't act otherwise, then there's no moral worth. Cool. I'll look into it, uh, Jibot. I might have understood that completely wrong and associated it in the wrong place. I, have to, I would have to look down a little bit. I'm not regarding EU, maybe. Nothing wrong with EU. Or is there? Uh, or is there? I would totally edit and help with essays. Mask of Raven, would you? I wanna get good at that sort of thing. Yeah, and that's one way you could do. By the way, if Blueberry, if you don't find any place online which is doing that, we could definitely create one on our Discord page, okay? I'm not sure if you're still here, uh, Blueberry, but again, if you want some place to post your essay and just ask people to help you edit it, uh, we can use our Discord page if you're into it. We got Mask of Raven saying he'd be willing to help. Uh, oh my goodness, Kant is very important, but I disagree so much with what I hear from him. Really, Mask of Raven? Now I'm getting more curious. Homer Simpson, the thick. Hey man, I shot a huge 14 pointer yesterday. Best hunt of my life. I don't know what a 14 pointer is. <laughs> 14 pointer, what is a 14 pointer? Homer Simpson, the thick 14 pointer. Best shot of my life. Best hunt of my life? Were you hunting? Did you eat your prey? Did you eat your food? That's the thing with philosophy. Nothing right or nothing wrong. Yeah. And philosophy is, is important. Very important. People get confused. People get pigeonholed in their philosophical thinking and don't. A 14 pointer is a stag whose antlers have 14 points. Oh, is that what it is? Did you eat him? Or, like, really, were you hunting for trophy or were you hunting for food? Do you eat 14 pointers? I don't know. Yeah, I love venison. Okay, cool. Did you guys uh, skin and everything in the woods? And did you have dogs with you? So you fed some of the internal organs to the dogs and, and stuff? And use the skin for clothing, I hope, right? I don't know what you would use the antlers for. It's both trophy and great food, although a bit gamey. 
Yeah, yeah, it would be. I mean, it's it's a wild animal, right? Antler, antler, handler. <laughs> to enlighten people make them make them aware of something they haven't thought about kind of finding answers to questions you can't solve in other ways yeah or possible possible my grandfather makes uh venison pepper pepperettes with his hunting spoils it's really good i exclusively hunt alone but i do have a dutch dutch sound Dutch sound and that's some kind of dog at times I prefer to shoot a stubborn idiot <laughs> don't, don't shoot your dog man <laughs> that's not good <laughs> no don't do that what was it called <laughs> antler antler <laughs> oh, fun oh, fun education what else we got regarding education if the government saw your message if the government no more hunting for you pita pita going to shoot me the pita's crying pita's crying bible thumb that's a, that's the name of that face that's crazy the names of the faces is weird <laughs> Oh, funny. What else we got about education? By the way, there was an article that I posted in the politics forum where um, there's, uh, because of student loans, the military is easily meeting their recruit recruitment requirements, right? So uh, student loans, uh, the cost of education, education, indoctrination, has gone up so high that people are trying to escape that by forfeiting their freedoms for four years or longer depending if war kicks in in different parts of the world to be recalled back uh, to go get a piece of paper you seem like a chill dude you want to go hunting sometime no i'm not i'm not a hunter i'm a forger I like picking fruit. Um, I like picking fruit. Um, the fr I, I killed an animal when I was young that traumatized me. <laughs> so I prefer not to murder, not to kill. And I, I'm okay with hunting. You eat your food that you hunt. Nah, more power to you. Um, I don't think there's uh, everyone in the world can do this. We can't really go back to being 7.5 billion or 7.6 billion hunter gatherers. <laughs> <I'll be laughs> crazy. <laughs> also, aren't you the guy who eats pomegranates on YouTube? Indeed, I am. <laughs> Everybody should eat pomegranates with a spoon. Watch, watch, watch. Fun, fun thing about hunting there was a hunting team out on a field that had all. Uh, all the rights in the world to be on that field for hunting in Sweden, hunting rights goes before right of public uh, access, right of commons, really these Antifa protesters walked up to the hunting party and started provoking them claiming they beat their kids and stuff damn there's a video of it on live yeah, there's a lot of stupid people around a lot of privileged people around that assume that what they think that includes me to a certain degree what they think is the absolute way to be right uh, that like you know we'll link it up to uh, the demonstrations in the last week with the students you know a couple of million people around the world students a lot of students going on strike uh, to do the climate 
thing and whatnot, right? Plutorino, how are you doing? Now, that's that's fine and dandy. We should be environmentally aware and stuff like this, but a lot of them assume that there are no there aren't other solutions other than what the powers that have hijacked that movement are to a certain degree, right? Like you saw the Gretchen girl. That's, I, well, I, I don't know. We'll get into it. Uh, what up, Chicho? Doing good. If people sat down and talked about stuff, we would solve many problems. We would solve most of the world's problems if there was communication and trade. Right? I wouldn't be surprised if they got physically, uh, physical with literally armed men. Yeah. Yeah, which is a stupid thing, right? Which is the thing, you know, can't do violence, man. And provo uh, provocate, <laughs> I can't even pronounce it now. <laughs> Stumbling. I can link it uh, to you. The video, uh, if you want, link it up. Uh, uh, Sticks Arm where would we link that up? Uh, in our Discord, I have no idea. What solution do you propose for climate change? Uh, for me, here, for example, a lot of people, like climate, like environment, we shat on, right? We need to behave. Otherwise, the earth is an ecosystem. I'll just do a little shake, a little hiccup, and wipe off 90% of humanity and start over, right? Here's some solutions that we can implement from the bottom up instead of trying to get the centralized powers to control us, right? To to dictate what all of humanity should do from top down. From top down is garbage, right? Because it will always hijack that. Here's 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 a couple of solutions that every city, every county can implement right away, right? And you know they could give corporations and their own uh, government a year to two years to roll in right they could say any uh, company that is working as a tourist in the tourism industry in your city has to have all their vehicles be electric right for example to reduce coal right because right now for example i live in an area which is touristy Right, a lot of huge chunks of the world are touristy, right? And all, there are all these tourist buses going around in the ocean. There are these gigantic, you know, really loud boats that go around and spew out a ton of hydrocarbons into the water supply and noise pollution and stuff like that, just hovering around the coast and stuff like that. Roll that out, right? Roll out fully electric transportation systems within the cities. Make public transportation free. Now, a lot of people say, oh, the cities need revenue money and the provinces and states need revenue money from public transportation to keep the public transportation going. Okay, for the short term, yes, on a fiscal yearly basis, they do. However, if you extend the this, this concept, this implementation of going fully electric, making everything free, public transportation free, right? If you extend the results of it over a decade or two decades, five, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, if you do analysis on that, what you're going to see is that, oh, the cost of healthcare is going to drop big time, big time. The cost of maintenance on the road is going to drop big time, big time. The cost of um, emergency services is going to drop because accidental rates will drop if you can get more people off the road big time big time so if you extend the cost benefit right ratios the numbers over more than just an electoral cycle right if you extend it into 10 15 20 years down the road 50 years down the road it's going to pay for itself 10 times over right but they don't do this why don't they do this because there's businesses involved right there's corporate money involved they need to get reelected, right so there's all this crap going on Dante there's so many things we could implement right without having 
introducing centralized carbon taxes without without getting centralized governments because they created this problem to begin with right passing laws to dictate what local communities should do local communities know best uh, tourism is just a small percentage of the economy not even close dante tourism is a huge part of the economy in many parts of the world really in many parts of the world i'm an old school team speak user i refuse to take the step over to this court okay i don't i actually don't know steam uh steam peaks i'm new all right i've only been here for about a year and a half make airplanes and cheeseburgers illegal and take five minutes showers very easy um, most of the pollution in countries especially in canada is by industry like i forget what it was like the amount of garbage that human being canadians produce as an individual right is only like five percent of the total weight of uh, waste that is produced in canada 95 percent of the waste or 90 percent of the waste produced in canada is by industry not by individuals right so for sure industry needs to be curtailed for example we have to hold corporations accountable for environmental pollution but in canada we don't right in canada we have in bc we have this mining company that they're tailing pond and i've done work around tailing ponds in 1980 1990s tailing ponds are one of the most toxic things that human beings have created on this planet they have this gigantic tailing pond break and go downstream for tens of kilometers of this toxic waste coming down and the previous government we had didn't send anyone to jail didn't hold the corporation accountable nothing right you want to clean up the environment hold corporations accountable start passing laws on a communal on a local basis that this needs to happen this needs to happen this needs to happen uh, stop driving cars make the jobs locally instead for sure stop importing meat and food like we do today don't use big boat ships for sure consume local foods huge 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 give free bicycles to people give free bicycles to people fantastic free public transportation man you're gonna see in certain cities no los angeles people drive an hour hour and a half to get to work right and the problem with electric cars is that they rely on electricity which can also be agreed dante agreed right like a lot of people say oh we have to go fully electric we can't go fully electric the grid system won't handle it we're going to burn the earth to produce the electricity it's not going to happen right a lot of people live in rural areas public transport is not an option for them uh, dante agreed but working in your home online is an option and that is where we're going i mentioned this before in a previous live stream we did uh, but we are, we're not even talking about education anymore but i guess we are so one of the things i mentioned <laughs> you know we went off topic off education we went to the environment but um what do you call it uh, one of the things that came up uh, on a few live streams ago was and it links up with education you know what should you do to get rid of the exam system is have a presence online right 10 years ago i didn't know anyone that was working from home in a satellite office specific specifically online and not going to a building right not going driving somewhere i was the only person that i knew right now i have family members that are doing this and that is one of the solutions you can still live in a rural area but hey let's use this technology to reduce your carbon footprint imagine if all car owners today traded their current cars for electric cars imagine when like 35 percent of them plug in their cars to load them i feel like it will overload the system for sure and then electric don't appear from nothing i think even five percent ten percent will overload the system public transportation is good but it can only be expanded that much tourism is ten percent of world gdp apparently so yeah that's a pretty tiny bit ten percent of world gdp is not tiny dante ten percent of the world gdp is huge that's gigantic okay but if countries like greece didn't have tourism they would be doomed yeah a lot of a lot of places yes that doesn't change the fact 
that focusing on tourism will reduce carbon emissions near enough will not yeah will not no it, it's it can't be just tourism that's just one of the places holding corporations accountable dude man i know me and you are on the same mindset on this you like shell in ecuador was it ecuador where they polluted the rainforest certain parts of the rainforest you can't hold these corporations accountable look at bp oh my god bp in the um in the caribbean with the deep uh, deep uh, whatever i forget the name of it uh hold it they blew it was spewing out oil in the bottom of the ocean for weeks right and then they sprayed this chemical to take all of that oil and it didn't clean up it just sunk it down to the bottom of the ocean out of sight out of mind right personally i would have sent a few executives to jail and basically shut down that thing and all their operations until you know you could give them a go ahead right that's not where the vast majority of jobs are going uh where was that tourism where is that dante mass majority of jobs tourism is huge service industry is huge 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 like tourism being 10 percent, i'm pretty sure another 10 percent of that they're not even accounting for right i don't know about canada and us but in sweden they took away the for civil responsibility for the politicians so they can't be held responsible for anything politicians us has it as well right i don't know if canada has it uh, politicians to a certain degree should have a little bit of immunity because they don't know this bureaucratic system corporations no corporations need to be held accountable politicians if they're taking bribes they've been bought out they should be held accountable if you would if anybody decides to become a politician as far as oh we're going down politics i don't want to go down politics that's a big problem as well well the oil industry controls the government so nothing is going to happen there what you meant with working from home the majority of people will not be able to work from home i, I agree with you dante we it's not a one-step solution let's let's assume for now like for example if you look at homeschooling uh since we're talking about education let's take homeschooling for an example homeschooling like 10 years ago was maybe one percent less than one percent of total schooling in canada and the united states i think it was the united states i was looking at or one one percent like 10 years ago 15 years ago or something like this right now homeschooling i think is broke three percent right that's two percent of the population of the united states that has kids in school that don't have to travel to school to educate their kids they're homeschooling if you do this slowly and that's growing that's going to continue to grow right working at home is doing the same thing it's going to grow there is no quick solution to this the only quick solution to this is the fastest solution to this is holding corporations accountable right and that doesn't mean holding them accountable in your country holding them accountable anywhere in the world if they're selling product in your country lobbying politicians is like bribing them yeah many politicians have gotten very nice jobs in corporations after they left the politics yeah and then they come back to politics again we deviated from education we deviated from education hi chicho are you a private tutor or do you work in school colleges yeah i'm private i don't i do work with schools i have worked with schools in the past as well but i do not work for schools uh, do you work from home i work from home and i go to students homes i'd love to work from home yeah dude that's the way i arranged it it didn't come easy i i had to work to and i had to sacrifice a lot to be able to be here right now a lot of people told me I was doing the wrong thing. I told them to go to hell. They didn't know me. A slight deviation in common. Nothing to worry about. 
it's like the image. But education, education. What else can we talk about education? What are some of the fields that are uh, in demand right now? Like don't spend a ton of money getting an education that is on the decline, right? Don't go into debt servitude, IT for sure. IT is in demand. Don't go into debt servitude for a basket weaving degree, okay? I work in a school and I find it hard working in that system. Yeah, I wouldn't survive in a school. I've had people tell me to, you know, get the government certificates I need to get to work in a school and they would hire me. Like, no, I'm not interested in that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't thrive. My students wouldn't prosper. Engineering always in demand. It depends on the type of engineering, Dante. I've kn I knew a lot of engineers that were home, uh, out of work, uh, jobless after graduating from university. There was a lot of them. Uh, civil engineering was the most uh, that were out of a job. Electrical engineering, high demand, right? So anything associated with IT engineering, high demand. Civil engineering goes through serious ups and downs, serious ups and downs. Construction engineer, uh, since we are always building, depending on what you're building, like the civil engineering is really, I've known some civil engineers in my life. There was a lot of them that were, uh, that were jobless. They didn't, they didn't have the funds. They, they, you know, there's nothing there for them. Just coming out of school, if they had added experience for a while, maybe they could have got a job out north building roads, right? In the middle of nowhere. Okay. That's the one thing with, education right now people are not doing the research to find out like if you're planning on going to university spending a certain amount of money to get a degree to be able to get a job there's two things you need to look into how much is that degree going to cost you actually three things i guess how much is that degree going to cost you if that job is in demand or not and look at the graph, see if it's declining or accelerating, right? The demand is increasing. So how much is that education going to cost you? If that job is in demand and what is it going to pay, right? If you're going to go into debt $100,000 to get a degree, which is, you know, maybe in demand, depending on the economic cycle, the business cycle, that's going to pay you $30,000 a year, you're in debt servitude for 10, 15 years, right? Because you're going to get interest accumulating, if not for the rest of your life, right? Don't go get a $100,000 degree, because that's what it is, it's a price now, right? Don't go into debt servitude for $100,000, where your job you're going to get is going to pay you $30,000. I don't care if that job is for the betterment of humanity i don't care if you love doing that job because if you're working a job for thirty thousand dollars and you're accumulating debt on a hundred thousand dollars that you cannot pay back i can guarantee you within the next five to ten years you're gonna hate your job okay cost benefit currently on that grind to try and find work after graduation uh, yeah Lanskirth I don't what uh, what degree did you get what degree did you get but yes best thing in my opinion would be IT since everything is starting to become uh, electrician electrician is always hot nobody uh, messing with electricity but themselves haha <laughs> I'm somewhat, somewhat concerned about work after my math degree mask of raven if you got math as far as i see it with a little bit of uh, ingenuity imagination you can you should be able to get a job uh, you might need to supplement the math degree with something else so if it's pure mathematics you know 
you might have to go into a system that the math isn't as brain intensive <laughs> as you would like it to be. Uh, but if you go into a field that's going to pay you well, then you're going to have a lot of time, just do it part time, a lot of time to indulge your pleasures, right? Just finished my MA in history. Okay. Lance Girth. I don't know how in demand that is. Uh, it could be, depending on what type of history, I guess. Uh, I'm pretty sure governments that are waging war in certain regions would, would, would like to hire you as a contractor. Masters in history, what type of jobs would you be getting? Dante, I'm pretty sure math, ma math decisions are in demand with corporations, big time. Unfortunately, a lot of Wall Street is looking for mathematicians because that's where it's at, right? Anything that involves IT work, especially like a technical degree, which is what I am doing, that applies theory and hands-on lab work, you're going to be highly valuable in the job market, especially with automation and cloud computing becoming more complex. Yeah, Gbot, I agree with you 100%. That's good to hear, Dante. Yeah, Mask of Raven, you should be fine. I mean, worst case scenario, uh, look into electrical engineering and you're set for life, right? With mathematics, you can do going to there. I'm thinking a healthy dose of computer science, yeah, would uh, make a math degree more, more marketable, yeah. A computer science, electrical engineering, your math degree, you just gave it an order of magnitude more power in terms of market marketability as well as pay raise right computer science is good so last girl History really only gets you into local heritage sites, museums, or teaching. Although it comes in, comes with a lot of transferable skills, I'm mostly interested in some sort of writing job, but it's tough to find. So here's the thing, Lance. Uh, if you like history, why not start a blog where you're writing about current events in a historical perspective and start building your presence online? And your expertise if, if you're passionate about it expertise in your field and slowly what you might see if you're doing good work right maybe if you're doing good work that people want to read your article and you start getting some traffic coming in the other thing you could do is you could start a podcast or start making videos talking about your passion and start loading those onto YouTube and uh, bit shoot and start maybe doing live streams regarding the historical perspective of current so link that up with something going on with that are that people are interested in right so you know by all means look into your writing job but have you started a blog where you're sharing your writing uh, you know what i mean there's a lot of steps that you need to take that you can't take right now that costs you nothing that only improve your marketability and considering my focus is in local history those jobs don't appear uh, appeal to me yeah then relating it to geopolitics wouldn't work for you but you could definitely talk about the historical perspective of things right make a youtube channel and talk about history hell yeah yeah make a youtube channel and talk about history yeah that's a good idea i'll have to look into that let's for sure do it man like there's there's one website that we check out that I check out on a regular basis. I recommended it um, on a few videos ago where I was sharing about my news sources that I check out, which is Caspian Report. I don't agree with everything they say. Some of the history I know better than they do and I caught them in little fibs and stuff like this, but it's a very general, nice overview of what's taking place. And you can never expect everything to be 100% accurate, right? Never expect perfection in this life it, it's, it's a foolish game right so Caspian report is something that I check out on a 
semi-regular basis to see what historical things are covering and they do a lot of history a lot of history it's needed out there because there's a lot of bs being taught in centralized education systems anyone read 48 laws of power or the 50th law no what if what if they you want 48 laws what's your idea of history mostly 20th century history cold war era specifically vietnam uh, lance that's current politics but also environmental history dude you're on the forefront of a whole movement coming up you should be writing podcasting live streaming creating videos if if you feel like it about what you understand and your perspective on things right right now okay Lance, I'll, I'll mention one more thing. The reason I'm here right now doing this, right? We're at the beginning stages of this technological revolution kicking in. In the from the 1990s to the 2000s to 2010 or so, right? 2011, 12 or so. The platforms, the 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 infrastructure was being rolled out for us to share information right and i'll you know there's censoring there's also bad things happening as well right and right now and since the one of the reasons i've gone into doing what i'm doing is because i realized that the world was going to be starved for good content because there's so much crap out there the crap is going to get filtered through fast and then slowly people are going to gravitate towards good content hopefully people are finding this good content right and from the response i've gotten and from what my personal opinion is amazing content right i do my best there's authenticity to it right because i'm not here to bs anyone if you're authentic about your belief systems be honest don't parrot other things right then what you're going to see is it might be an avenue for you to at least supplement whatever income you might be getting from somewhere else for now poop soup, <laughs> poop soup. <laughs> the bomb for five toys they're really, really good books they go through the most common ways that are being oh this is the 48 and 50 thing they go through the most common ways that are being used to control you and you how you can use this to your benefit etc very good books okay sticks man stick sit kiss our men and if you can uh, please post the link and oh yeah even you're not on discord if you're on discord i would say post the link on discord absolutely i agree that's something i would definitely enjoy thanks our, our pleasure lance I definitely recommend you to look look up that okay I, I don't know if i will i need you need to get on, you need to go on discord <laughs> please go on discord don't be stubborn well i should be i shouldn't say that i refuse to go on facebook so um but if if you ever go on discord please post them in you trying to bring me over to the dark side? Is this is Discord the dark side? Would that mean? Well, I guess it is the dark side. My space was a lot better than <laughs> Facebook. But I enjoy Discord. Discord is good. So far for us. So far for us. I was absolutely opposed to Discord for the most of its existence, but I love it now. Okay, cool, uh, Mask of Raven. I didn't use the other system, so I don't know. Uh, I forget what it was, Steam something. Nothing wrong with Discord. Yeah, so far, it's worked fantastic for us, and there's some amazing people there. All depends on the server. Many are trash, some are good. Oh, is there a lot of trash there? Uh, Dante I joined a couple and then it was like lots of things going on and some of the stuff just I was like okay 
get out, get out, get out. I use TeamSpeak for gaming with friends. The sound quality is superior to Discord. Ah, okay. For gaming, then that's what it is, right? At some point, at some point, Discord will improve their uh, their sound quality. I'm pretty sure. But for getting information out there and stuff like that, Discord is definitely better. Is it okay? For me, I went on Discord because uh, I believe Casey uh, mentioned it. And I was like, "What's Discord?" <laughs> and then he goes, and then I found that it was just a forum set up, really. So I was like, "Oh, cool! Thanks for the recommendation." And uh, Casey set it up, and other people helped. The mods on Discord helped a lot, and thank you to the mods on Discord and on Twitch as well. But I wouldn't be on there if it wasn't for the mods that set up a lot of things going on right so it's fantastic many some discourse servers are horribly laid out and spammy and just shit posting is it yeah we try to control that the, that's one thing that happened with the mods that told me uh, if you don't keep tabs on the discord uh, with the post it'll just go chaos so again thank you to the mods for taking care of business there um, i wasn't aware I just like sharing information. Um, <laughs> at some point, maybe we have our own servers so we don't, you know. But for now, it works pretty good. For now, it works pretty good. We talked a little bit about education. That's good. Right? What are you guys munching on? I got my apples going on. Delicious apples. says slight deviation is normal in life i feel there needs to be a greater focus on career education in the school system less 100 percent are the high school education uh, elementary and high school education in canada is a babysitting service so the parents can go to work okay it's an indoctrination center so basically parents are forfeiting their children to a centralized system to hold on to them for five, six, seven hours a day so they can go to work, make enough money to pay the taxes and the mortgage on overpriced values that the banking system have pumped up, right? A ridiculous system. Uh, that being said, you need to get your high school diploma. I don't care who you are, get that piece of paper that allows you to get out of jail right and figure out what it is that you need to do to be a free human being okay really figure the stuff out because the education system is not going to teach it to you unless you're lucky enough to get a very good unique teacher that gives a rat's ass Apart from the half credit course in Ontario, there was no career education. I went to university with no idea what I wanted to do. Civics and careers is a joke. Yeah. Partly my fault for not researching, but I still, Lance, the kicker is all the stuff that I'm saying, I'm being pretty harsh, right? I don't hold the kids accountable for, I do, my own personal students that I have like this and I when I talk to you guys too bad life is not fair you've upped up right uh, make it better right don't don't be a victim don't play the victim and all that jazz all oh, the school system blah, 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 blah. the system doesn't give a rat's ass about you right it's a bureaucracy there you hold you're responsible for your own actions not from the age of 18 19 20 25 30 but from early teenagehood right you are responsible for your own actions okay that being said i don't hold kids coming out of high school i don't put the guilt on them for not knowing what it is that they want to do or for being stupid idiots or for being completely ignorant 
or for being tools of centralized power that is controlling them to get the corporate agenda going or the religious institution agenda going or whatever agenda that they want these kids to be working toward. I don't really hold teenagers coming out of high school. You know, I don't put the blame on them per se. However, too bad, too bad. Learn your lessons as fast as you can, okay? Because the faster you learn your lessons, the easier your life will be down the road. You can be a free human being, okay? So as soon as, we mentioned this before, as soon as you get out of high school, you finish high school, do your partying, do whatever you wanna do, you should. You just got out of 12 years of indoctrination. You need to purge the BS. You need to reprogram yourself a little bit. But you can't assume everything that was taught in school was garbage. You need to know how to read and write well. You need to learn how to do mathematics well. If you haven't learned how to read and write when you're coming out of high school, and if you hadn't, haven't learned mathematics when you come out of high school, okay, if you're lacking in those two subjects, your first order of business, learn how to read and write properly, learn math. After you're done partying, maybe it'll take you a week, maybe it'll take you f four months, maybe it'll take you a year, a year of celebration, really. How long are you gonna celebrate coming out of high school? Two years, five years? I met people 10 years after high school. Well, high school was the best of my life. I go, you're an idiot. When you hear 30 year olds, 25 year olds, 40, 50, 60 year olds say that high school was the best time of their life, they're an idiot. Do not take their advice, okay? Because they're still living in a time when we're teenagers. Really, what? Okay, when you finish high school, okay, do your partying for as long as you want and as long as it's reasonable, right? You didn't achieve anything too great. You just went through a system which totally collapsed that is garbage and acquired a piece of paper that a monkey could do, which you are coming out of high school, okay? You just got a piece of paper. You did the bare minimum that life requires of you right once you're done partying learn how to read and write properly learn your mathematics and start following political economic news to figure out which way the world is going right and it doesn't have to be geopolitical news it could be just local community news maybe related with if you're interested in the arts figure out what art projects your community is doing regarding art make your footprint in your community first or online presence online right learn how to read and write properly learn your mathematics start analyzing what you, what this world is about and slowly what you realize is you'll start to figure things out and figure out where you don't want to be and where you actually might want to be or might want to try out right as bill hicks would say it's just a ride Write it well, I guess, right? Party my my fault. Don't trust anyone to teach you everything. Make sure you do your own research on the subject to get different angles on the subject. One hundred percent. On a personal level, you have to act as responsible as possible for yourself and as well as you can within the system while still realizing that the system is ultimately what needs addressing to enact widespread change. Mask of Raven 100% individually shouldn't be used as an excuse to do wrong, but overall wrong will be done due to flawed systems. Yeah, and it's not necessarily flawed. Some of these systems are by design, right? They've been put in place by design to make sure they get a certain agenda across. Okay. Our indoctrination centers are exactly that. They're exactly that. Right. Join the conversation on Discord. <laughs> this is Dixman. You're like, 
<laughs> no, this works. Don't do it. Have fun. We did focus on education a fair bit on this stream, which is good. Yes. Well, flawed relative to my ideals. Yeah, fraud, flawed relative to our ideals, for sure. <laughs> Big time. Oh my god. So flawed, so flawed, so flawed. So flawed. Crazy, crazy how bad they are, right? Crazy how bad they are. So we've been at this for almost two hours. Hour and 45 minutes. Wow. As Plato said, if you refuse to engage in politics, then you will be ruled by your inferiors. Yeah. That's a Plato, Plato quote. Yeah. Or psychopath. Well, I might have to develop and evolve at some point. <laughs> yeah, we do. I, man, for me, like really, you look back in your life and there, there are a tremendous number of cringeworthy moments, right? And there will be for everyone. But as long as you're reducing the frequency of those cringeworthy moments, the tremendous mistakes and idiot things and stupid things you've done in life, right? And finally come to the realization or acceptance that even though those were cringeworthy moments, you did the best with what you knew at the time, right? Or tried to anyway then you can improve you can learn more you can grow you can hopefully reach a state where you figure out who you are and where you want to be and what you want to do i'm the type that don't care if things are cringy or not i just do it and don't care what people think <laughs> at some point you're gonna get burned man it's good to think about other people sometimes you don't you know you do your thing for sure but it's also very important to consider others not institutions right I'm talking about human beings so if you're in a party if you're in a gathering and if you're doing something that is making everybody cringe then maybe instead of continually to do that thing maybe this isn't your party find a new party to go to you'll enjoy it a lot more right i used to be dude i used to poke the hornet's nest it's fun for a while it's fun for a while and then sometimes at some point maybe you go mm, there are maybe other things that could be a lot more fun your head is shiny thanks i worked hard at this man really I rub it for good luck every day. <laughs> You're good at reading people? Okay. Okay. I've been in situations, man, where there were close calls. And usually, by the way, uh, if you're if you're smart, you can read people and stuff like this. You'll stay mostly out of trouble. However, most of the trouble I've been in my life has been because I've been with people that have done stupid things that i felt responsibility for that i had to get involved right as the saying goes i think it was in the godfather that i saw it where it said um what was it it said uh, i'm paraphrasing but uh, you should never worry about intelligent enemies right because intelligent enemies will never get you in trouble if you're if you're intelligent if you don't provoke them the thing you should worry about is stupid friends because stupid friends will always get you in trouble right. mostly i sit back and let people take room while i analyze that <laughs> that's a good thing to do actually it's the quiet ones you gotta worry about it's the quiet ones you gotta worry about
crazy. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Fun. Should we call the stream gang? That was a good three days. X is like, oh, the quiet. Oh, yeah, X, you're the quietest one. I swear, one of the quietest ones. Anyway, the quiet one is always up to something. Funny. Intelligent enemies will let you hang. Ah, oh, here we go. Allow this. Nice. Thank you for that. Crazy old gamer. Intelligent enemies will let you hang yourself rather do the work for you. Nice. And if you're smart about it, you won't hang yourself. Right? But this saying is really important. This is the this is the saying, I think it's the mantra of enforcement agencies, right? If you ever have to deal with any type of enforcement agency, law, whatever it is don't talk a lot the yes and no answers only because whenever you see a cop standing there on the street and there's a guy that's just chatting away blah 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 blah, blah, blah. uh yeah the guy the guy's digging himself into a bigger bigger hole <laughs> right <laughs> intelligent enemies will let you hang yourself rather than do the work for you the person chatting away he's hanging himself okay. nice saying am I detained best question yeah am I free to go no why am I being detained if they say you are not detained you are free to walk yep 100% if they say you are detained why are you detained Javi, how are you doing? Hey, a lot of news about the repo rate. Yeah, yeah, kicked up to 10%. Hey, repo rate is the interest rate at which the central bank lends money for commercial banks on a short term, right? That is reached over 10%. So banks not banks got really scared these last few days. What do you think could have made them so scared that the repo rate went, went up so much? What news did they get? And when are we going to get those news uh war middle east right with iran right the powers that be they're trying desperately to kick that up right the saudi refinery and all that jazz right there's a fair bit going on and of course bubbles bursting left and right interest rates going negative and this is politics and stuff so but we're at the end of the stream so but for sure bring this up in the next uh, political live stream current events live stream we can talk about it um, but there's some bubbles that are bursting now right and the trade war the duality dual nature the bipolar nature of our the direction that we're going with our current economic system EU so much so much right so much so much negative interest rates is huge the obligations debt obligations social security like right but for now that spike was people knew what was going to happen yeah the usual fear-mongering plus maybe the houthis being able to reach the money center of saudi arabia yeah i got a feeling uh man just l politics i've mentioned this before uh, i don't know when we started doing the video politics streams and stuff like this forget but we said this before house of sound is in deep trouble they sent money centers being the oil refineries and things yeah If I had, if I was one of those sheiks in Saudi Arabia, and I wouldn't be because morally <laughs> reprehensible, <laughs> like uh, the House of Saud, what they've done, right? Uh, there would be a lot of money, I'm guessing, coming out of Saudi Arabia right now, going to other places in the world to park anonymously. I think military things is the cheapest easiest way to make news that seems important yeah 100% agree are they 
they ru uh, their rule seems fairly stable. No, not very stable at all. When was the last time Saudi Arabia, the largest refinery in the world, this is the only time that I know of, that from what I understand, uh, the, there is tremendous turmoil in the House of Saud right now. Really, there's tremendous two years ago three years ago four three years ago the prince arrested detained a hotel's worth of his rivals in a hotel and made them pay the house their fine their finances is dwindling they may seem like this but they're not dante just one one thing i can associate to this to you the shah of iran in the mid 1970s 1975 1970 seemed to be one of the most iran under the dictatorship of the shah seemed to be one of the most stable countries in the region okay his military was gigantic yet the shah of iran had spent so much money buying militaries from buying weapons from all over the world a lot of it from the united states right the standing army was gigantic at some point i read the thing was like fourth in the world so they can sing right three years later revolution he's out complete flip right house of Saud. what i've seen happen with the amount of weapons they've been buying and all the crap going on they're being isolated they're in deep trouble the 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 it might not go all the way where they lose complete control however there's good the odds are there's going to be a shake up in the house of Saud. okay if they're smart about it there'll be a shake up about it but i don't think you know we'll see i don't think they're very stable not even close not even close they're 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 in deep trouble right but is there as much popular opposition to the monarchy as there was in Iran they I wouldn't say they're popular um, sorry popular opposition uh, there's covert opposition okay like US is sending soldiers back into Saudi Arabia to protect the refineries that was one of the main um, points that some of the hardcore Wahhabists really didn't like that on the holiest land of their religion they had an American military base how are they going to feel about US soldiers coming back in right there is opposition we'll see where it goes I agree with Dante the military things can seem like something is about to happen but I think what scared the banks is domestic discontent I can feel that person personally this happened in American banks not over there the repo thing they get um, domestic data before people abroad personally yeah yeah there's a lot of bubbles being burst they don't like debt levels are kicking up it's insane and there's money being pulled out like China like really this trade war it's a pretty big deal <laughs> it's a pretty big deal you might see Canadian economy completely crumble of China if China this puts out the word because it functions as one entity it says hey money out of Canada you're gonna see house prices in Canada drop by 50% right I know that you had mentioned in the video that I watched previously before that you said chess should be part of the education system or at least introduced 100% give up uh, chess should be part of of the education system and not just chess they should start off with chess so as far as i'm concerned if i had a school that we can go and get into this in the next well here if i had a school mathematics for sure part of the curriculum maybe two math courses to cover all the mathematics right maybe three if you include sciences and stuff in there right english or natural language there physical education 100 percent nature understanding nature earth sciences 100 percent mandatory courses right another course that I would definitely have would be gaming right 
computer IT and stuff should be optional. Some people don't, they're not into it. It should be mandatory personally, I think, programming and stuff, but not really, not everyone's wired for that, right? They don't need to have programming abilities to be able to function within this world as a benefit, but they don't need to, something I'm wired for it. But gaming class, 100% chess, backgammon, go, board games, right? Just board games. I'm not talking about computer games. People have their own computers. They do their own thing. No computer games, but board games. Diplomacy, Axis and Allies, some of the historical board games. I would introduce just uh, different types of board games into a classroom. So grade, from grade one, really, I would have a board game class all the way to grade 12. That would be my school. With a few modifications, of course. Do you think the best thing that can happen for the younger generation is that all those bubbles and pensions in the older generation to go bust? Because they need the young people. And if young people aren't happy and working, then who's going to get the work done? Um, the Javi, it's when the bubbles burst, it's going to be serious amount of turmoil around. I don't think it's the best thing that can happen because no matter what, it's bad, right? It's gonna be bad for a while. However, people, young people, if I was coming up, like right now, I would not be investing in Wall Street, okay? Would I be investing in Wall Street if I was coming out of high school, getting a job, university or whatever? No, right? Why wouldn't I invest in it? Because Wall Street is actively working against my interest, is working to enslave me, right? So I personally would not invest in this system that has been established through Wall Street, through pensions and stuff like this. Let the chips fall where they may. But one thing I would really try to get a handle on is how bad is the fall going to be? And I would do my best to try and protect myself. So is it the best thing? No, because it's going to be a lot of pain associated with that. However, it needs to happen. At least understand hardware and how operating systems work on computers. Yeah, for sure, Gibot. Yeah, for sure, Gibot. Programming is essential, a form of mathematics that could be an optional course for math-centric students and anyone interested since traditional math isn't required to a certain extent. Mask of Raven, I agree. It should be part of that you know, one, two, science, those three math courses, right? Basically, there should be three science, math related mandatory courses in school, okay? Programming would definitely have to be there as an introduction, and then you introduce optional, hardcore, full-on programming in there. It's like you do sciences, and then in grade 11, in my part of the world anyway, they do general science up to grade 10, where they cover physics, chemistry, and biology, all three of them in one year, and then in grade 11 it splits off into a dedicated course for physics, dedicated course for chemistry, dedicated course for biology. I think that's the way programming should be part of it as well. Right. I play Go, I am, I am one done. I'm assuming that's really good. <laughs> or is that the first beginning? Is the done system backwards like 12 is the highest is it 12 7 i don't think the older people know how bad it is for their young no they don't i don't think they do i get into arguments with uh, the older generation a lot because i say oh young people i go what are you guys talking about you could have bought a house with two years of salary back then when you bought a house right now kids even if they work for 20 years for the salary they can't buy i get into arguments with them they have no idea how how difficult it is for young people right now right and that's the older generations ignorance programming indoctrination right because keep in mind they also went through this current education system it's so bad we're not even having kids not even when we're pushing up her 30s reminds me that zoo animals don't mate when they're miserable yeah they just, and by the way the older generation is gonna pay the price for that. There's a lot of older generation that are retired that are having their pensions cut, right? They, the bond 
collapse bubble that's that's been created is huge like the debt obligations that are coming it, it's going to be insane man i know for certain many don't yeah if i know uh, something for certain is that me and everyone my age are hiding a lot of pain and hopelessness yeah and but the, the jamie you shouldn't be hopeless if you're trying to get into the system that has been established with the housing with the stock market with chasing the ferrari and stuff you're going to be miserable look into alternate systems of what's there okay and it really depends of where you are i'm very lucky on the west coast of canada uh, so there's a lot of options here all alternate ways of being and a lot of community oriented stuff happening free rock concerts going on free shows happening like i i'm very lucky in that aspect it is extremely expensive to live here right there's a lot of youth here that have like what you're talking about they they feel hopeless but you have to break that hopelessness break it by learning a lot and start experimenting with your finances start investing in something that you're passionate about and see if if that is viable something viable that you can get into in regards to economics and personal finance and, and whatnot it's a long road it's not a quick fix it's not a quick fix but don't feel hopeless just don't participate in the system that has enslaved everyone pull out of that system number one get out of debt get out of debt that is ridiculously important so so important okay so important so much there eh? so much there okay gang let's call the stream that was sort of ending on a little sad note but that's okay i was trying to look for something here that i got happy i got apples that are happy should we all munch on an apple dante perfect connect with community 100 percent. okay it might take a little bit of time but connect with your community i think my generation generation z or millennial millennials weren't facing a spiritual problem problem today material gains don't mean a thing engaging in philosophy art or having a faith system is more important yeah spirituality is ridiculously important and right now you're seeing there's a fair bit of it in my part of the world anyway i don't know what's going on in some other parts of the world i don't feel hopeless myself when things get bad bad only the tough survive i feel hopeless for everyone who is on borrowed time i don't see how i can help them i only see that i can survive really bad times uh, the javi the best way to help people is live by example really and you cannot help everyone it's impossible or else all there is is nihilism or else all there is is nihilism yeah. that i can outlast everyone else in a marathon of pain i only beneficial for me not for society don't look at it as pain it's life even through all through all this hard times and pain there's amazing moments there's amazing moments cherish those and try to increase the frequency of those right as dante said connect with the community very 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 important very important and it doesn't have to be in a physical community that should be there but an online community as well but make sure it's more than just superficial and be careful how you connect online and all that jazz. I'm assuming everybody's tech savvy here or online savvy here. Okay. On that positive, semi positive note, connect with the community. Uh, thanks for being here, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream. It was a good three days. We'll be back uh, towards the end of this week uh, to do more. Uh, I'll announce the next set of live streams probably either Wednesday or something. Uh, I'm going to try to get some stuff done in the back end. Uh, try to start the editing and see how that goes okay aside from that thank you for taking care of business thank you for the mods 
Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for the conversations. Thank you for participating. Thank you for the links on Discord. If you went on Discord and provided us with more information. Okay. Aside from that, um, hope you have a fantastic Sunday. Bye, everyone.